What's up guys? Um, doing a little quick video here explaining the five names of Atta Bay and where did um, that kind of uh, interpretation originated, where it came from. Um, sources I'm going to use for this is, um, it's a great book, has a lot of comparisons on uh, the text of Bane, and it's called Mythologia Taina or Ieti. Ramon Panay y la relación sobre las antigüedades de los indios. And it was edited by Angel Rodriguez Alvarez. I'll post a screenshot of that book. And also an account of the antiquities of the Indians uh, by Jose Juan Ara. So those are the sources that I'm going to be using uh, for this. Okay, so we're going to get into where does the interpretation of the five names of Atta Bay originate from? So, um, that usually has to deal with um, <clears throat> the attributes of the Divine Mother. Um, it can also deal with um, the attributes of the indigenous woman's uh, sexuality. But also it can deal with um, uh, celestial phenomenon, but we're going to get into that. Okay, now the first reference of this it comes from Peter Mater de Angahira from his Dakadas, um, uh, book nine, chapter four. Okay, and um, and in the book Mythologia Diana Oyeti, you can find that in page 327 where they cite a quote from his book, uh, Dakadas. Okay. And according to Peter Martier, he says the same God says that he has a mother called by these five names. Atabera, Mamona, Wakarapita, Iera, Kuimosa. Okay? Once again, this is what Peter Martier says. The same God says that he has a mother called by these five names. Okay? So now we have a reference where uh, uh, the five names of Atta Bay comes from, okay, as it is first cited by Peter Martier. And this is where we find writers such as Sebastian Robo Lamarche, um, they add an emphasis towards that uh, interpretation, okay? But on top of that, um, Alfonso de Yula in Las Casas, they have a different interpretation which kind of makes it confusing and I'm going to explain it thus okay now this one is from Alfonso de Eula um, they hold that he is in heaven immortal and that no one can see him and that he has a mother and that he has no beginning and this God they call Yokahu Bawad Marakote and they call his mother Atabe, Yamel, Waka, Pito, Suimako, which are five names. Now, in this text, he doesn't clarify that these are the names of the D Divine Mother. Okay? La Casas makes this even more confusing when he writes, God has a mother whose name was Atabe and his brother Waka and other relatives in like fashion. Okay, so in this we have three different interpretations in relationships uh, to the names of Atta Bay. So, what this can, the only way we can clarify this is to try to linguistically break down the names. Okay, now one point that I want to make out, and you can find this in the Antiquities of the Indians, footnote number five, right? Uh, Jose Juan Aram, he says, a free translation of the above epics more at atten attentive to their sacred character than to their literal meaning. Okay, so when you read the Antiquities of the Indians, um, Jose Juan Aram doesn't give a word-for-word -word breakdown um, in concerns with the names of associated with Atta Bay. Right, so once again, he says a free translation of the Bud epics more attentive to their sacred character than to their literal meaning would read thus Mother of the Waters, Lady of the Moon, 
the tides in maternity and universal mother. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's get into um, breaking down the names. All right. Um, let's start with Atta Bay. Okay. Um, Yula records Atta Bay. Uh, Peter Martyr, Atta Beta. Okay. So we see that they're similar names. All right. You can compare it to Ate, mother. Atumwa, the beginning. Atabehu, belly, womb. Karnago has Atatabo, which means uh, the feminine principle. We see Renee mentioned that a lot. <coughs> um, also in Lakono, they have the word Ire, to be married. Suriname, they have Iri, okay, which also means to be married. Okay, uh, I believe uh, Lakono has the word Itabo, which means lagoon or pond. And in this sense, um, Atabe or Atabeda can rep symbolize uh, the cosmic mother, or it can symbolize the first mother, okay? Or, you know, the mother of the primal waters, okay? So let's move on, okay? Waka and Wakarapita. Okay, Waka was recorded by Yula, also by Las Casas, and Wakarapita, uh, we see, is recorded by Peter Martier. Okay, you see the pronoun Wa, meaning our, the car, Kati, Kachi, moon. <coughs> Anger Hero records Apita. Okay, Yula records Apito. Now, in Kalina, they have the word apita, <coughs> which means uh, to ripen, to become ripe. Okay, which is very interesting. <coughs> okay, so waka would mean our moon. Wakarapita would mean our ripen moon. So, in a sense, that would symbolize um, the light coming from the full moon. Now, I said already that um, Eula records the word Apito, which is related to uh, Akalina, which is mainland Carib, or Apita, which it, it means to become red, to ripen. Also have the word Apiro, to cause to become red, to ripen, okay? So that will symbolize the light coming from the moon, okay? Because it's the light from the moon that also, that helps to, um, for crops to, to grow, for, for life to grow in the Caribbean, the, the lunar light, okay? Um, the word Mabona, uh, one thing um, that I don't agree, Jose Juan Aaron, um, he cites a gentleman who breaks down Mamona when making a comparison, saying Mama, mother, and no, the plural sign, the sign of the feminine plural would be equivalent to mothers, or more, more likely universal mother. In that sense, it's, a little, it's, it's, it's conjecture. Because um, there's no, I haven't seen any Arawak word that's comparable to Mamona, uh, meaning mother. Okay, um, Kalinao, uh, they have Bibi, which is also uh, related to mainland Carib. Okay, that's recorded, this was recorded by uh, Raymond Brenton. Um, uh, Ruben Reyes has Uguchuru for, for mother. Um, John Peter Bennett for the Lacono has Oyo for, uh, for mother. Um, and sometimes the Y can also be in, can be an I in, uh, um, Lacono, like I've seen. Um, but, um, the Mamona can be cons comparable to noon for moon and no noon for moon in Uh, Yeda 
um, can be comparable to uh, the Garif, Garifuna Niiti, uh, meaning light. Uh, the Kono has Ia, likeness. So once again, that could be a reference to to be or the state of being luminous. So that's this is uh, you seen reference to the light from the moon. Okay, your Mao or your Mao. Okay, uh, can be comparable to Oyo for mother. Okay, and Garifuna, Ikemeri, light, Meriti, bright. Uh, Lakono has Kalime for light. Uh, John Peter Bennett has uh, Kalemehi for light. Okay, Wapisiana has uh, Gamu for sun. Okay, so this right here, that can be a reference to uh, the, ref the light coming from the moon. Um, another one we have is Guy Mosa, Kui Mosa. It can be comparable to Kun and Kalina, rainy season. Kunubu and Garifuna, rain. Uh, Kuma and Kalina, flood to be high tide. Soka and Kalina cause to pour down or raining heavily. Uh, Suimaku can be compared to Huya, rain. Um, now these last two were kind of a little hard to break down <coughs> because the way that um, the words were re recorded. Now Guimosa and Suimaku when you look at them, they look similar. But what what makes it confusing is Yula uh, records it Z-U-I and Angahira records uh, G-U-I. But they both have the root Uima, okay? Which sounds like Huya for, for rain, all right? So with Suimaku, it uh, can also be comparable to Oni for rain. Or ko, which could be the, the negative, not so. In Suimaku in this sense could symbolize no rain or drought. Now, please keep in mind that I'm not a professional linguist. Uh, I'm just doing this as an independent researcher to try to make it more understandable for general readers who don't have access to books and to make this uh, a little more comprehensible. Um, to those um, seeking understanding of their heritage and ancestry. Now, one thing to keep in mind um, <clears throat> in comparing, okay, um, you see um, Yula records Atabe, Yermao, Waka, Pito, Suimako. Okay, um, Peter Martier, uh, he records Atabera, Mamona, Waka, Pita, Iyeda, uh, Kwai Mosa. Okay, which <clears throat> we see the names are a little different from what uh, Eula recorded. But we see that um, these names have a uh, celestial connection. It could mean in the sense that <clears throat> what the answers were trying to describe that which uh, brings life. Okay, and also these names can relate to the name uh Bawa uh, Marcotti. Okay, we see in Italian hierarchy, hierarchy that he has the longest uh, title. Okay, <coughs> so he can be like the grand creator. Because one thing we got to keep in mind: uh, two symbols that were very important uh, in the Italian world is the the yuka which was uh, the stable used to create cassave and we see <coughs> that in, in order for the yucca to grow um, the sun nourishes the ground and the water helps the, the yucca to grow so that was something that was very important to our ancestors so we see in these stories um, that our ancestors were laying out principles and also on top of this 
you can see that all these themes are also related to the spirituality of San Juan de la Marijuana. Now, I'll um, leave that for George Estevez to um, explain that on a future video. Um, you can also check out his article on Agua Dulce, which I'll also put a link on this video. This is very important um, to make that connection because we see that uh, all of these things are relevant in terms of the spirituality. And with that, when you pursue the language, um, it's going to give you more understanding and you're going to um, see things coming to light when uh, you compare words. And from comparing words, you're going to have a better understanding and what was being told in the story. Because a lot of times uh, in the story, the way, um, for example, <coughs> how Alfonso de Yula, um, he, he writes uh, his, his uh, translation from what uh, Ramon Pane was explaining of our ancestors. His style of writing is very obscure, so it can be very confused. So the only way that you're going to get uh, an understanding is by comparing other, other stories. And then from, from that, you know, um, comparing other words to try to make sense of what was being said. Because there's a lot of times that uh, he makes a lot of mistakes. And then what uh, uh, Bartolome de las Casas writes is uh, not enough because he doesn't give enough emphasis in explaining what the story was. You know, so it's, it's <clears throat> in a lot of instances, um, the writers, a lot of the Spanish writers, they were very careless, where um, you see the French, the Dutch, and the German when they were recording um, the Kalinago and uh, the Lacono language, they they were more uh, thorough in how they recorded the language and also the spirituality. So that's my take on the five names of Out the Bay. And I will, will, will bring these things more full circle when I bring the presentation Return of the Taino Gods. So I hope this short video gives you um, some insight and I would I will be going more into more detail when I bring out my PowerPoint PowerPoint presentation. So until next time, peace.